Well, hello there. Welcome once more to Crunchyrest Kitchen. And if this is your first time stopping by, I'd like to say a very warm welcome to you. Do you hear the excitement in my voice? I am super excited. I am so proud and happy to share with you this recipe. Yes, this very delicious chunky eggplant recipe. And we are going to be having it with a combination of yams and cassava. Delicious, perfect, a real taste from home. I am just super excited to let you know that every vegetable that I put in this too, with the exception of the onions, came from my garden, yes, my little desert garden. If you don't know, I live on the desert and to plant anything, it's a real chore. So this video is supposed to serve two purposes. One, to encourage you to try this recipe and my other purpose hopefully is that if you have any available land, if you have any means of planting something in a pot, that you will plant something, anything, an herb, a vegetable, a fruit, whatever you can plant. This is my aim with this video and I hope I'm able to achieve that at the end of the day. So okay, come with me in my garden. This is my little garden and I have here eggplants. Those eggplants that you just saw uh, are the bigger kind. I have a lot of the Chinese eggplants and that is what we are going to be using to make this recipe. The bigger ones, hopefully we'll use it in another video. And my tomatoes, if you watch the beginning of my garden, I talked about how the sun here, the heat here kills my tomatoes. This year it has done a little much better. I've been able to pick a few tomatoes and they are beautiful, delicious. They just taste different. This part is my little herb garden. I am super excited to have all these herbs, you know, just about what, $3 a piece. And you have this bush of herbs instead of just going in the store every day and buying a little piece. So I have picked my eggplants. Here are the eggplants. And I have a few of the tomatoes that are perfect ripe. So we are going to be picking them as well. And they are going to go in this too. Just look at these beautiful, beautiful grape tomatoes. Are they not just gorgeous? Just perfect to go on your salad, you know? Perfect. Just and if you have ever planted your own uh, tomatoes or, you know, anybody gave you tomatoes that they picked from their garden, you know the taste is super, super delicious and very different from what you will get from the store. Just look at these. These are my favorite. I just love these ones. These, they're not just tasty, but of course they add a lot of beauty to whatever you make your salads to garnish. Just beautiful. I have here some white eggplants. They are not fully mature yet, and so hopefully we'll be making some recipes for this also. So comment down below. Let me know what you want me to be making with these white eggplants. I am thinking I'll use a few to make some chunky okra stew. You know how we the cans normally make it. So let me know what else you have in mind that you want me to make with that, and then we will think of something to make. So this beautiful tomato here is ready to be picked. And I am just going to go ahead and pick it and add it to the rest so we can make our stew with it. Pardon me, I went out here with no purpose of videoing, but I was like, you know what? It might be an inspiration to somebody, so let me video. So I don't have a tripod with me, and I am just trying to let you see what is in here. And so it is not the perfect of videos, but... I hope it still serves its purpose. So what you saw were banana peppers. I have here also some serranos. I have habaneros. I have all kinds of chilies. And hopefully I'll be sharing more recipes with you as I pick them up. I have picked a bunch of serrano chilies already. And I have frozen them. I am hoping to add a few more to it so we can make some delicious green chili sauce. And if you watch my birthday video, I actually have a green chili sauce uh, recipe in there, a quick one, but it is still uh, enough for you to understand and grasp uh, the whole concept of the recipe. So I'm just washing my vegetables right now. I have washed my eggplants beautifully and I'm washing the tomatoes. They are so beautiful, so beautiful. It's like I just can't have enough of these tomatoes, the colors. You know, by now you should know if you've been watching my videos, you know I love my color. And I, I had no idea how beautiful these orange, is it yellow? I think it's yellow. Tomatoes, you know, the, the beauty of those colors. But yes, I just love, love them and they're so tasty. 
so I have washed these now and I am going to go ahead and give them a second rinse to make sure everything is of course very clean even though it's organic you know from my garden my, I know what went onto it no chemicals but you still want to make sure that it is thoroughly washed so I gave it a second wash and now I have everything here ready I am going to be cutting these uh, eggplants into like cubes and I have to say even right here from the beginning you could also make the same recipe by just boiling your eggplants and then when you're done boiling you just go ahead and just uh, mush it or remove the seeds from it when it is boiled and then just try to use a, a potato masher to do it or just a food processor to just pulse it and get it into chunky uh, bits as well but I like it this way and Feel free to do it whatever you way you want. At the end of the day, it's still going to be hopefully eggplant or garden eggs that you used. If you happen to have the actual garden eggs we have in Ghana, then go ahead and use that. It is even better, like trust me. But I always say, whilst we are away from home, we are always going to just make do with what we have. But if you have real white eggplants, you know, any part of Africa, just go ahead and use that. So I have diced my eggplants, every one of them, and right now I just have a, water, a pan full of water and I'm just going to put everything here in the water. And this is going to sit throughout the process whilst I get uh, the stew going. And this way it is going to give off most of the seeds. I am hoping that I am able to lose as many of the seeds into the water as possible because, you know, these eggplants are very, very seedy. I don't mind eating the seeds, but of course, uh, if I'm able to get a few out of, of them as well, that will be helpful to me. So that is set aside now and right now I have an onion. This is just one large onion. I am just going to go ahead and dice it. And yes, like I said, this is how I was brought up. So for any stew, like a basic related stew, eggplant stew, palava sauce, I just grew up with the mentality that the onion has to be uh, chopped or diced as opposed to making tomato stew where you just cut it up into big, you know, uh, pieces. And I know some of you related to that. <laughs> it's very funny, like the little things that, you know, how you were brought up one way, you talk one way, something, and then it sticks to you forever. So just look at how gorgeous my tomato is. And I am not going to deceive them. I don't mind, like I just said, I don't mind my seeds. Uh, they also add, you know, to the textures and nutritional value of your food. So I'm just going to let them be. And if you feel like uh, removing them, just go ahead and remove them. I'm just very temperamental with my tomatoes. And of course, with most parts of cooking, just look at this. I can't stop crushing over it. Trust me, there is this pride and joy in picking and, you know, growing something, watching it grow, picking it up, cooking it and eating it. It's just amazing. And I know if you've ever gotten, if you've ever grown anything and gotten to the point of harvesting it, I know you know what I'm talking about. So I'm done with the red ones and let's look at that. I just cut through one of these orange. Is it orange or yellow? I'm not even sure anymore. And tomatoes, these basically, uh, they go so well in making like pasta sauce. I am hoping to make some other sauces if I'm able to pick any more. I have a few in the fridge and hopefully we can see what, you know, what sauce we can make with that. But for now, I'm just going to add a few of those to the eggplants because I thought it would just balance things out. It's just going to be chunky anyway. And the eggplants being, you know, the purple color and the tomatoes and everything. Um, hopefully it shows the colors will pop a little bit that way. So my peppers 
just like everything else I'm just going to uh, dice I am not going to be blending but like I said you can also go ahead and blend these uh, um, it's two serranos and one habanero they are spicy but of course considering the amount of stew that I'm going to be making I don't think by the time this is cooked you know you can really bite into any piece of pepper it's going to cook soften up and almost disintegrate anyway and I'm just trying to be lazy of course <laughs> which I think we are all allowed to be sometimes and so I have here my Kobe I actually soaked this way ahead of time so I have uh, Kobe that is salted and dried um, tilapia fish and I also have here two pieces of stock fish you know this that is what we call alatakako so you know my previous video the, my most recent video you will see the fresh kind of this fish and this is the salted and dry kind so this is uh, very popular in Nigeria and growing up in Obwase uh you know this is what we used to call my skako like obwasi for yeah this is what the com agc used to provide this with wheat and oil and stuff like that yes so my skako that is alatakako and it is just delicious it's very meaty it's very dry you need to soak it for a long period of time for it to this is what i mean this fish for it to be able to soften up to be enjoyed in your meal but I love it I love it I think I prefer this to kako when it comes to taste but I love kako you know the real Ghanaian kako for the aromas the flavors that it brings to your food so I guess I love both of them so anyway we are going to start making our soup our stew I have here my um, pot and I have added some uh, palm oil it is hot at this point and I'm going to go ahead and fry my salted tilapia. Of course, we don't want to fry that stock fish for anything. It is so dry. We are actually trying to rehydrate it. And so it's going to go ahead and be soaking. And I think I should say I should have actually soaked it, you know, in some hot water. That would probably have uh, sped up the process a little bit. But yes, we are just frying this salted tilapia, Kobe. And it's just infusing all the beautiful, gorgeous <laughs> smells. Yes, I'm laughing at myself saying beautiful, gorgeous. Because if you know Kobe, you know. Yes, it has a strong smell, of course. But the aroma, the flavors it brings to your food is just beyond amazing. Just beyond amazing. So I am just trying to make sure it is fried into being crisp. And then I'm going to remove them and then... We'll have this Kobe infused oil to start making our stew with. If you can help it, get some Kobe, get some Kako, get some more money, whatever you can. That, you know, really elevates the flavors and the taste of your stew. So our Kobe is fried now. It took about just about, you know, four minutes on each side. It is fried to perfection. It is so crispy. It smells amazing. And now I'm just going to go ahead and bring them out of the oil. I'm just trying to let them drain a little bit. You know, I don't want all that oil. They need to stay here in the pot because they belong in the stew. And now I'm just bringing everything out and then we'll proceed to make our stew. I know if you've ever done this I know you can only imagine yes don't worry I have my vent on so we are trying to you know let suction this smell out and of course uh, burn some scented candles if you can just to neutralize the odors but this is amazing so I have put all my whole onion that was chopped in here now I have fried it to the point where it is almost like um starting to crisp up and caram like it's not really going to caramelize i have to say i just wanted it to cook and soften up a little bit and it has done that remember we fried the kobe in the palm oil which is you know has no liquid in it anyway so it, it was perfect i've added my peppers let it cook for about a full minute and now i've added my chopped tomatoes we are not going to be adding any uh, tomato paste or anything and that is one reason i use the palm oil to get that beautiful color so this is just going to be a very all natural stew and not just all natural all organic all i know what is in my stew kind of recipe <laughs> 
I'm sorry to be rambling, but um, this is just to encourage somebody to plant something, okay? Just it's just not just about the health uh, the health aspect of eating that vegetable, but for me it just uplifts my spirit every day that I go and look at these plants grow. I am so happy to see a change every morning. You walk to the backyard and you see something new every day when you look at these plants. Anyway, so I covered my stew and let it cook for about um, five minutes on low to medium heat and as you can see at this point the tomatoes are almost like bursting it has softened up a little and i have added in here now the two pieces of stuck fish because i'm trying to let it go into the stew at this point where it still has a lot of moisture from the tomatoes so that helps to soften it up and cook it up fast and so at this point our uh, eggplants have soaked for almost an hour you know from the time i started prepping running around catching kids trying to set up equipment for this video and all this eggplant has soaked for about um an hour now and as you can see it has given off they've given off a lot of the seeds of course but i have still have plenty of seeds in there but for me that is okay and if uh, that bothers you that much then i would say uh, let it soak longer or you know throw this first water away and then place it in another bowl of water and let it give off some more seeds but for me this is okay so I'm gonna go ahead and boil the eggplant and this should take anywhere from 12 to 15 minutes and so uh, when that is boiled and softened up enough then I'll go ahead and add it to my stew you don't want to just put it straight in the stew because it's probably not going to cook well that way there isn't enough moisture here in this tomato base to cook your eggplant all the way through so meanwhile our stew is doing perfect the fish you know the stock fish is softening up a little bit at this point and I think it is time for me to go ahead and add in my Kobe so it will also get a chance to, you know, soften up. Remember, I fried it to be very crisp, you know, so that way it doesn't fall apart. That is the key. You know, you want the Kobe to be very well fried so it's not going to just be falling apart in the stew when you add everything. Because once it gets in there, it's going to soak up some of the juices from the stew and soften up again. So our Kobe will sit here and infuse all the aromas into the stew and suck up the good juices from the stew as well. You know, a perfect marriage. And whilst it's doing that, I have my yam here and I am just going to go ahead and peel this. So once I'm done peeling the yams, of course, I am going to slice them and I'm trying to do it beautifully, just like my mom would want me to because I don't want to hear... No, you to So I'm trying to cut them beautifully, and so I'm all done, and I'm gonna be washing them. But before I do that, I remember that I have some cassava in the freezer. I love, I love cassava. yes. As Antiniba pure, Bancha Pisier, the old worker. And this Goya cassava, it's so perfect. Normally, I would rather buy this than to buy the tuber because you know what? You go buy the tuber of cassava you try to uh, peel it and then you find out that it is you know like that kind of rusty brownish the coconte kind no i don't want any dreaming cassava and it's so super expensive so normally i just buy my bags of frozen cassava when i go to the restaurant supply store i buy a huge bag but i haven't been there in quite a long time so i got these this is from uh, fry supermarket you could get it in most supermarket frozen cassava trust me you will love it and the same by the way so sweet so soft the texture oh it's just perfect perfect never ever disappoint so next time you go into your grocery store look for some cassava frozen and thank me later so anyway it's been about you know 12 15 minutes there about our eggplant is soft enough you could let it go longer if you want, but you know me, I always cook everything in bulk. I hardly ever cook one meal that we just eat and not have, you know, leftovers. So let's say meal prep. And this actually, of course, is a meal prep. So I don't want to overcook the eggplants because when we, we take it out of the fridge, we're going to warm it again another day when we are eating it. 
I mean, of course, it's going to be in individual portions, but it's still going to be in the microwave for about three minutes. It's going to soften up some more. So I always bear that in mind when I am cooking. And so for that reason, I think my eggplant is perfect now. It's perfect at this point. And so I've put them in here. I strain them, of course, because you don't want your stew to be runny. And now I have just the eggplant alone without the water that it coated in, in here in my stew. Mixing it up, beautiful, smelling, amazing. And I know uh, if you've paid attention, I haven't added any salt up to this point. Why? Because, of course, every piece of fish that is in this too, I think both kinds of fish are salted highly salted especially the kobe so i always in making my kobe stew or anything kobe tolo beef you know the salted beef kind of stuff i always put my salt at the very last when i know that this stew this soup whatever is almost done at this point and if i taste it then and i feel like it needs some salt then i go ahead and add some salt so anyway now that the eggplant is off the fire and into the stew, we are going to be cooking our uh, ampisi. So I have placed it on fire, added some salt to it. Of course, it has some water and we are going to boil this for about another, you know, about 15 minutes. And once it's done, lunch is ready. So just like you are seeing now, I have added some salt to my stew at this point because I tasted it. I can taste salt, but it's, there isn't enough salt. So... I have added the salt, mixing it up, and this stew at this point is done. Done. I'm just going to let it simmer for about two minutes on the very lowest setting, just so the salt, because my salt is a little bit on the coarse side, it's not even fine, you know, powdery, and so it gets a chance to melt or or uh, you know really incorporate into the stew and at this point it has been done i have covered it because i've turned down the flame and checking on my cassava a few minutes later and my yams of course but the focus is always on the bunch of pc it is done ready to come off the fire and we can sit and enjoy ah hard work the fruit of my labor in the sense of it coming from my garden and me slaving in the kitchen to have this done i am super super excited to enjoy this meal just look at that just look at that every part of this too every little piece that you put in your mouth taste of love this is what i call made with love and i really hope you give this a try whether it's with produce from your garden, whether you bought it, whatever way, I just hope you try this recipe. You will love it. I know you will. And of course, like I said, even better if you have a real nyadwa, real garden eggs. This chunky garden eggs too has been my favorite for many, many, many years. And of course, in the absence of white garden eggs, I have incorporated eggplants and it has always been perfect perfect i really hope you are able to try this and now let's just crush a little bit on the mpc of course because it is also part of this amazing combination you know perfect pair like of course it would have been even better with some body mpc but they are so so pie you know some plantains would have been even better but look at this look at how beautiful did you even see that cassava Moto, no me, no me, no me, no me. Just so buttery, so smooth. It tasted amazing, amazing. Of course, we hit that and consumed that way before the yams was like the yams didn't even really matter. I hope you are able to try this. Kindly give me a thumbs up, share my videos, and if this is your first time here, this is Quan Choice Kitchen, where cooking delicious, wholesome meal is my passion. And until I come your way next time with something delicious, be loving. Be kind, be happy.